and welcome back to another episode of Space Engineers. In the last episode, we managed to grab the Fregna, and we brought it with us, as we are going to retrofit it and repair it and make it useful. This is why I leave behind such a large chunk of ship, which is pretty much functional. I mean, realistically, we just need to balance a little bit of thrust around it. And it's got plenty of space for us to do some awesome upgrades in here, which we are going to do. But we have done another jump, and we are now near our next planetoid. Uh, I don't think it's a full planet size. I believe it's just a moon-sized place. But our... where we come from? Ah, there we are. We have Endor, 2,700 kilometers away, and our Tatooine, where we salvage the Fregna, 1,678. We have whatever this new planet is, and it looks very icy, so I'm probably going to call it Hoth, just cuz. But what my plans are for today is... We have this nice, big, open area in here, and I'm thinking I should be able to fit in a refinery of some kind. Because, yes, I should. Can I even stand it up? Can I? Oh, I don't know if it's... Oh, I could just... I can just barely have it standing in this space. That's amazing. There's just enough room. I might need to move some of these lights, but that is okay for me. I can do that. I can take away a light if it means that I can sneak in a refinery right here on the edge. And I do have to get rid of a little bit of this armor paneling. But as we remove this paneling, we see we are exposing conveyor systems, which will lead us to be able to attach it into the ship's systems and hopefully get it online. And there's that one there, conveyor junction. I'm guessing, oh, this is an armor slope. Why are you a slope? You are probably, ah, you're part of the this little airlocky thing we got going on. Okay, so I can't really bother with you. But I could bring you down and this way and down somehow. Maybe an assembler. I think I can do that with that. And then put a refinery here. And while I am away, my little repair bots, which I have purchased another one because they're just so cute. We got repair bot 2388. And uh, where's the other guy? Hey, he's over here probably getting some more materials. Or... He's humping a thruster. A repair bot 2081. No. What are you doing, repair bot 2081? You're missing a thruster component. I know. <laughs> Calm down, little little robot. Uh, I'll get you some thruster components in the future. But we're going to do a little bit of organizing and setting up some initial stuff into this cargo bay. And then we're going to leave it to the robots to build up as we jump in the cursor and head on down to the planet. So let's get this organized. Alright, with all of the armor panels removed from there, we can see how this is laid out. We've got an H202 Gen here, which we could conceivably repair pretty quickly. There's this cargo container, got double oxygen, probably another H202 gen, yep, and that is, yeah, it's going down into these junctions, and then those junctions are probably coming forward, I'd say, just trying to get an idea of what the plumbing is like in here, there's that junction, no, what is the purpose of the junction then, because there's nothing here, There wasn't anything on that side, so I am confused about the purpose of that junction itself.
because it's not connecting to anything. All right. Which makes me question of whether or not I want to keep this airlock as it is. Because I would like to, if possible, place my refinery right here. I think it would look good there. I want to put a refinery there and a refinery here. And so therefore, I need to get access to it through this block. And that will allow me to run conveyorage into it. Because on these refineries, we've got it on those sides there. We don't have anything on the bottom. We do have one on the top. So that is also an option. Um, but I believe there's only one block thick on the top. I don't think we really have enough room for that in this particular ship. So I believe our only option here is to sort of take this end where all these are sticking out and we can just run a line of conveyors down and into the side of the refinery. Ah, uh, but we do have, ooh, we do have the thought that there are the upgrade modules to go on the back of the refineries. I almost forgot. We need those. So we need to add an extra block of space, which is going to pull this in even tighter itself, leaving us with that, which is actually not bad. Put the different modules on the back. Uh, grab those there. Probably a combination of uh, speed and yield. Don't really have the gold for yield. Probably so just speed for now. But we can sneak in the modules. And then we can just have a straight on pass through normal airlock built up right here. To allow you access from the front to the back. Perfection! Let's get these conveyor lines run. And with these conveyors in place, these refineries are now piped up to the rest of the ship. And probably continue along with the industrial theme. I do like how the different uh, industrial blocks lock together. We can plop down industrial assembler here uh, but if I'm not mistaken that edge of the refinery aha yes it does not have a railing on it aha perfect so you can put an industrial refinery refinery assembler right on this one and you should be able to walk up here and walk into this area easy peasy now the other side isn't going to work as well because it's on the opposite. Ugh. Fortunately, that one won't be as good, but we can put in a staircase right along here, which I need construction components, and then maybe I want to put in a railing somewhere along that thing, just on the outer edge, so that way you don't fall off when you are walking up into the zone. And, uh, no real other choice except slapping down some speed mods on these things. But, at the moment, I need to be able to make sure I can still access the speed mods in the back before I get this all built up. But I'm thinking this will serve as a nice little refinery base in space. Combine that with maybe some storage. Get some cargo down in this ship. Not sure exactly how I want to fit in a large cargo, but maybe some small cargoes across the roof or tucked into corners and such will work nicely. But that can be left for the future. For now, I want to go exploring a little bit. We have an ice ball. We also have a couple beacons. We have a DVWE and an IDTR, whichever ones are those. 
And I think we will take the cursor. As it has the weaponry. So if I need to, I can fight. So, damper's on. We'll disconnect. And uh, we're going on hydrogen only here. Oh! Oh, hey! My little repair bot was... was oh, now I realize why he was helping <laughs> the... The thruster he was trying to get to this thing's gear so that he could fix it up for me how nice of him but unfortunately he's still a little dumb he's upside down rubbing his head on the on the grate there okay what are you trying to do <laughs> you are 201 Still trying to do thruster components. Okay, well, you can stay there. Uh, it would be beneficial if you could work on the base. But I will be back in just a few minutes here. We are coming up on it. We're actually just barely within the planet's gravitation. Come on, safe zone. Do your thing. Save me! Bonk. <laughs> uh... Oh, it's... I, I, I can't help myself. Every time I see a safe zone, I have to go into it full speed. It's just the funny thing to do. Let's see... What they have available here. Ah, I can't let that precious oxygen out. We need it. Hello, store! What are you? You... Are another... Ship merchant! Blue Ambassador Explorer. Ooh. Interplanetary exploration vessel with jump capability and high acceleration. Features a living air area, crew quarters, large cargo container, production medical room, small landing bay, emergency parachutes, and a jump drive. Oh, that is nice. I also have the aggressive miner, which has a little bit of fighting capability. Oh, and a Class J courier. A jump-capable ship in a small package. The ship is well-suited to bring small cargo and packages over long distances. The J-Class cur courier performs poorly in atmosphere, but is equipped with parachutes in case of emergency. Ooh. Man, there's so many good ships out here to purchase. Like, that freighter looks amazing. Three large containers. Got refineries. It's pressurized. It's got survival kit. Oh. That's awesome. I need to purchase some more of these ships. To do that, I need to make a lot more money. Oh, even a cruiser, three hundred and seventy-four million, basically three hundred seventy-five million dollars. We can get an entire cruiser. Oh, so good! And they are again searching for components. Okay, so this is another ship merchant. So we'll take this, and we'll go new from current position, and uh, this new. Icy planet, I believe it is. We're going to call this Hoth. So we got a, a Hoth ship merchant. Contracts. Regular old contracts. Repair, acquisition, and such. Hauling stuff. Distance of 1355. Not too bad. Alright. Doesn't seem to be anything else in this station. Just really here to check out what they are selling. So that I can come back in the future and uh, acquire some amazing ships. And space just got real. Gives you some amazing vistas when you're flying around in this game. God damn, that looks good. You can even get the glow from my thrusters in the back if I want to. There's another safe zone. We're coming in. Top speed. We're gonna do another safe zone bonk. Whee! Bonk. <laughs> oh, I got bumped out of the safe zone. 
Oh god, it didn't cut it didn't kill my speed like I was expecting. <laughs> you I can purchase ammo from you and explosives! You are a weapons dealer! Yay! I can sell you raw materials, ingots, and I can buy bullets. This is really important to me, to buy bullets. Because I can take these... And I can break them down for magnesium if I don't find any magnesium. That's really good. I will have to see. Okay, I kind of want to do this. Uh, we'll have to go and see which piece of ammo is the most magnesium per unit. And then... Compare that versus its price and see what is the best way to buy magnesium. I can even gain, I can buy rockets because I have a little bit of platinum in them as well. Nice! So this is a weapons merchant. Excellent! What group is this? IDTR. So in the factions, should be one of these factions here. So many. Independent traders. Very nice. I am tempted, as I'm right here, to... Oh, I don't even have any... I don't have any space in the cursor. But I can... I can fill it up. I can spend... Uh, I don't think I need 7,000. Wait. That's a lot. That's a lot of money for a little bit of hydrogen. I'm not doing that. But you can actually fill up your, your ships this way. That's pretty cool. I am tempted right now. <gasps> oh, I could buy... I could buy a rocket launcher. I bought a rocket launcher. Oh, yeah, baby. Okay. Uh, I don't have very much inventory left on my character. Uh, can I buy a rocket? How big are these things? Can I get one more? No, I can't. Can I sell some stuff? No, they're not buying what I have. <gasps> oh, but I got a rocket launcher. Hehehe. <laughs> Give me a rocket launcher. I can load the rocket launcher. And then the missile will be in the rocket launcher. And it's not in my inventory anymore. So I can buy another missile. Boop. Yeah. All right. I'm a happy boy. I got guns. So this is very good. Uh, if I don't find any magnesium anytime soon, I'm going to bring back with the uh, Spectre, land it so I can access its cargo, and then I'm going to transfer over um, a bunch of money and buy all the bullets. But for now, uh, wherever the hell this planet is again, uh, I think it is that way! We're off towards the planet. Let's go see what this planetoid has. I'm approaching the surface here, but wow, it is really low gravity. Surface gravity is only 0.1. You could easily land on here with ion engines. And if I'm not mistaken, yep, no atmosphere. Yeah, this is a very low gravity moon. Damn. All right. Well, let's land. And let's do a seismic survey. Figure out what is on this planetoid. Scan. Nothing in the local area. But we can see that there is 
iron, nickel, silicon, and ice. So just only basic resources on this planetoid. So, unfortunately, no magnesium for me. Another miss. Therefore, I'm not even sure if there's any reason for me to explore this planetoid any further. God, orbital speed on this planet must be so low. I'm just flipping, flopping back between, like, unstable to Kang, and then I'm going to give it up some juice, and it just immediately goes to escape trajectory. It's because the orbital, like, the gravity is so low, the orbital speed must be so precise of exactly the right speed to be able to orbit this uh, small planetoid. But we are heading our way back to the Fregna. I can see it. Oh, I, I can, I can see it just barely there. And of course, it is not a safe zone, so I can't fly directly at it and smash into it for fun. <laughs> I should approach it with caution. No shit, Sherlock. Oh, honey, I'm home. I'm not sure if my bots have done anything useful in the meantime. Doesn't look like they've built up any of the refinery, but that's all right. I'm gonna actually just park this on top of the uh, the Fregna. Why not? The back of the dropship is a little uh, crowded. It would also be useful if I could park both ships here on the Fregna. Because then the dropship would be available to detach and go do solo missions if need to be. Alright. Good little cursor. I'm going to turn off your lights because you don't need to turn them off. Alright. Now. What to bring over there? Probably the whole kit and caboodle. Uh, we're going to go to the weapons merchant. Which we have that beacon. We're going to see if we can jump to the beacon. And uh, if we can, great. Then we can maneuver our way in. And if not, we can at least get close and then detach my stuff and be able to purchase as much uh, bullets as possible. And we will deposit our missile. Because I don't want to lose it. It's very important to me. Very, very important to me. We can look at, in the assembler, specifically the ammo how much magnesium each of these things have. Assault cannon is 0.43. No, sorry, 0.4 acquired. The artillery is 1.67. Very nice. This is 0.4 as well. So assault cannon and rocket are the same in terms of the amount of magnesium they'll give you. It also had, I believe they had some magazines over there. These look to be... The rapid fire ones are 0.13. These are 0.05. Damn, they're they're cheap. Um, but it looks like ah oh yeah, magazine capacity is pretty low. Yeah, it looks like it's about right. But the the handgun stuff is not where I'm going to get the magnes magnesium powder from. It looks like it's going to come from artillery shells and such. Because if I get 1.67 per artillery shell, and I can make another box of Gatling, or... Uh, actually, yeah, I can... From each artillery shell, I can make a box of Gatling and a box of autocannon. <laughs> Which... Would help me with my, uh... Ammo requirements. And I could add some more guns to these ships. So, let's power up the jump drive. And we're going to search for the weapons merchant and we're going to attempt a jump uh, distance to coordinate 15 kilometers okay oh repair bots uh Bye! <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> oh, my repair bots. 
<laughs> oh, I think I can go out and I can uh, store them. Right? They should still be part of the the thing, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I can. I can. I can store them <laughs> from here. <laughs> I just <laughs> the repair bot's just like working on something, and then the chip just disappears, and they're like, "What? What happened?" And they're just stuck out in space. Oh my god, that would be so funny. It's just the repair bot trying to fly back towards me for like hours and hours because I teleported across the entirety of the system. Oh boy. Oh, that was a good laugh. Okay. Now this is going to be a real annoying. It's trying to maneuver this entire Kent and Caboodle into the safe zone as uh, this thing is big and heavy and unwieldy. But, I think we can get it done. The problem being is that my thrust is all going to come there, which is going to make me turn left. So I can actually thrust forward to turn left here. I don't need to use my mouse. So what I need to do is I need to yaw right while I thrust forward in order to get some movement going. Why am I st Okay. We are coasting. This is good. Heaven forbid we fall into gravity right now. I will not be able to save this thing if we fall into gravity. Thankfully, gravity would be really low, and I could probably land it without doing too much damage. But that would be sad. <laughs> that would actually be kind of funny. <laughs> Coming on the weapons merchant. Start our brakes now. Bring our speed down. I can't remember which orientation this guy is in. I think I'm coming from underneath him again, but I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Rotate. Rotate. Brakes! Ah, oh, there we go. We have arrived. And my gyros are ever so slowly. Oh, so close. It's so close! Come on. Show me some of that magnetism. Oh, this is a perfect camera angle. <gasps> Thank you, Magnetism! Gotcha! Yeah, baby! I'm connected! <laughs> God, that is the jankiest <laughs> talking I have ever done. But, look at that. It works. <laughs> Alright, let's go spend all of our money buying bullets. Because we need to. Store, select inventory, drop ship, large cargo. <gasps> we can also sell from here, can't we? Yes, we can sell some cobalt. Get a little bit of that. Oh, I don't want to sell gold. I can sell power cells for sure. Radio comps, sure. Silver. I only want 150. We can spare that. Solars, yes. Detectors, yes. Gold and magnesium, we can hold on to. But bam, another couple million. And we can go. Buying from them. Oh, it's changed a little bit. Um, the assault gun ammo is gone. But we can buy 127 pieces of artillery. So, let's just do a little math here. If we have an artillery shell that has 127 pieces and sells for 127,000. Uh, sorry, that's the price per unit. So 127,000, uh, 336, divided by that gives me 1.67 magnesium, right? That's 76,000 
$249 per magnesium. Where that auto cannon magazine is 45,742 divided by the 0 0.67 it gives me is 68,000 per magnesium. So 68,000 versus the 76,000. So it's actually better for the auto cannon magazine if I didn't do the math and just immediately forget it because I can't remember numbers. So I can just buy 200 auto mag auto cannon magazines. Nice. We still have some millions of dollars here. What would it be for our artillery shells? And do I even I I, I have the space to buy artillery shells. 16 million. What about say like 50 of them, 40 of them. 5 million? 5 million dollars on artillery? Sure. Oh, I feel so much better now. I can go straight into uh, disassembling all of that and getting a stockpile of magnesium so that I can be able to go and kick some ass. Contracts. Acquisition contracts as well. We can take these. Large steel tubes. Hell yeah, I have a lot of that. Uh, we'll just look at all the acquisition. Cobalt ingots? Sure. Iron ingots? Yes, I do. Auction bottles? No, nah, that's silly. I don't want to do that. Finish. From my dropship. Yeah, give me some more credits. I want money. Hell yes. Thank you. Give me that reputation. Give me that money. Let me rank up so I can get all of your goodies at a discount. Alright, let's go take a look at our... our well, I guess they're not ill-gotten because we actually paid for them. But I want to say ill-gotten gains. Oh, how beautiful artillery. So into production. We'll go to the assembler, the main. Uh, it's working on stuff. So we'll go to assembler co-op. We'll pop into this. And we'll go to ammo. And go 40 artillery. Which is giving us 66 magnesium. I've never been so excited to have such a tiny amount of magnesium. It's actually kind of stupid how little I have right now. And we have 204 auto cannon magazines. I'm tempted to disassemble those at the moment, but I kind of want to use them because auto cannons are really good. And I can start building auto cannon turrets onto my smaller ships and such. So I'm going to leave them. We're going to have the magnesium from the artillery shells. And that's going to be very useful. Because we're going to get, uh, it was like 60 something out of that. So I can build like another, like, 100 auto cannon magazines. Ah, so good. All right. All right. So we've done what we can at the weapons merchant. We're going to disconnect. Pull away, and we'll just turn our dampeners off and just glide out of the safe zone. Unfortunately, not able to do any repairs or changes to our ships while in the safe zone. But as soon as we are out, we can put some of that new ammo to use. Left the safe zone, dampeners on. Gyro on. Stopping us up. And we should be able to go through and reactivate our two helpers that we accidentally jumped and left behind. Respawn repair bot. And respawn repair bot. Hey, boys and girls. Hi. Oh, you're upside down. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll join you this way. How you doing? Yeah, I'm sorry I left you behind. It wasn't my intention. I'm truly sorry. But, shall we get to work uh, repairing up this fragment? I think it would be a nice thing to do. Also, I thought of what I should probably do for these ships for now. Is I should probably, instead of having this be a mag plate, I should probably have this be a proper umbilical going into the ship's conveyor system. Because 
this ship needs to be able to access the resources that the dropship has in order for me to do some tricks because I want to in this in this ship in various places like right here I want to do the welder trick but this grid doesn't have the resources to do that trick it would weld yes but I'd have to manually transfer over the materials so what I think I need to do is I need to punch a hole through the side here somewhere here because I don't really want to punch it through this stuff because these are these are proper full batteries but I guess it might have to just have to happen unfortunately wherever I can get a good conveyor line through or I could rotate up and attach it to the roof I could attach it right there screw it why not these things don't need to be in the same orientation do they that just looks good on in my brain it helps me have like a a single plane of orientation which makes my brain happy why not just have my ships be at 90 degree angles to each other let's do it okay uh, you guys can stay out there my little robot friends and I'm going to maneuver my ship into position and now that we are in position we can connect this but first things first is this connection going to be good as in does that actually connect me to the back aha it does look at all these reinforced dupes okay very good I just want to make sure that me connecting up there is actually what's connected to the back of the ship because I want to go through all the trouble of making connectors and everything here and then just being like oh wait that actually doesn't work <laughs> and I just get all sad and with this connectors established it is time to park whoa there we go oh the fragment is rotating quick grab it <laughs> Jesus Christ <laughs> the fragment started rotating away that magnetism from the connector is fearsome but if this is all properly plumbed through then my little drone guys shouldn't have any issue gathering the resources they need to be able to build stuff because they can just take it from any resource uh, now any any cargo and we can grab a welder here all components successfully withdrawn is that was for the welder yes it was and we can drop it right eh, yeah, here's good enough And once it is online, turn the welder on and cackle. <laughs> Look at the power of my industry as my assemblers and refineries, well, refineries for now, assemblers soon get built up instantaneously with no effort. <laughs> God, I love the welder trick. It makes life so much easier. Uh, we do need steel plates, though, which we're getting there. I'm pretty sure I probably have zero steel plates right now. <laughs> my my production is probably going nuts building steel plates. Yes, it is. <laughs> steel plate. None. Yeah. You have a thousand on stock, but when you demand, like, 2,600 or something, or 2,400 from these two things... All of a sudden, your stock is uh, a little low. But, hey, these will be gridded very soon. I'm so excited. That guy's flying around the inside. Hey, dude. <laughs> you are you sideways. E one of them is online. Yes. The other is going to take a minute. As it is... Uh, <laughs> my assemblers are going as fast as they can. But this go up one is not helping. Come on. Go up. Do something. Alright, fine. <laughs> Take on your own thousand steel plate. 
I'll always need them. <laughs> there, we're going faster. Hey, okay. But, he's online. Excellent. Now for the next steps. With just a couple conveyors, I should be able to get up another welder right here. I just temporarily removed the assembler. <gasps> it can build that too. Wonderful. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Welder. And now the fact that you're connected, Mr. Welder can be turned on. And uh, I believe, yes. Okay, he gets the top one. He gets this one. I think I might just have to do this one manually myself. But that's fine. And we get all of the modules upgraded as well for free. Oh, excellent. Although, I know what I need to do. Stop. Stop trying to repair this thing, damn it. I'm trying to, to delete it. You're not helping, mister. <laughs> uh. Hey! Repair bot, I'm trying to... God damn it. I'm trying to grind this down. I want to replace this one. Okay, there we go. Now I can turn everything back on. Ah, oh, you guys are just so crazy. I want a T-junction there, god damn it. <laughs> let me put a T-junction there. So I can put two. One on each side. God damn. Let me cook for a second. There we go. And no, oh, I could probably do the same thing. Yeah, I can replace the uh, the assembler over on this side. Let this thing work on building that up as well. <laughs> go, my welder clusters. Build everything for me. Blah. Ah, <laughs> uh, never manually build anything in your life. Let your welders do it for you. That is something I'm learning. How to be lazy in space engineers. How to never build anything manually again. Let welders do everything for you. Wow, this are all done. It's <gasps> amazing. Okay. That means I can do this. I can get that on the build planner. And then I can grab the steel plates, but I can't because I can't. So can I get the computers? We have 200 computers there. Why can't I grab 60 of them? There we go. Now I just need the 69. Nice. Steel plates. Go. Build more, my different assemblers. You are now functional. Go. Build. Okay, so you're not functional because you're not piped up yet. But co-op. Build another thousand steel plates. Build. The last speed module's online for that refinery. Wah ha ha This speed module. I can't connect anything for some reason. Can I get it from this side? I can. This side is disconnected somehow. I must figure out why. There we go. Now you're connected, right? I can uh, pull materials out of you. Yeah, okay, you're good. <laughs> Now we need to go find some resources to use on this newly functional industry in space. As I am excited to get some uh, various materials, get it into the system, and uh, get them refined up. As such, we should get ready to jump off to our next system, which... Uh, which is which direction here? That was Tatooine. That was Endor. This will be Hoth. And where are we going next is a very good question. What I might need to do is just jump away from the planet because I am a little bit close to it. Uh, although I should probably store my little bots here in a second. I will do that from the cockpit.
factory. Yes, there it is. And we'll grab my little bots and store them. All right, they are ready to jump. Now, question is, where to jump? I believe my target, aha, the next planet in the system is on the other side of this planet. So unfortunately, I can't really see it. Can't really aim at it, but that is okay. Uh, can we just jump through it? Can we just jump through the planet, man? That sounds awesome. Remove that, just make it a blind jump. And if we can't jump through it, we could just jump to the side, get a view of where we're going, and then jump there next. But if I give it some amount of kilometerage pointing straight towards the planet, obstacle detected. Unfortunately, we cannot do it. So let's go to our jump drive here. We're gonna bring this down to like a hundred, God, sure, 200 kilometers. We're just going to point off to the side here, and whenever we can go, we're just going to jump away from this planet. Why is there always obstacles detected? I want to just jump! Hey, let's go! Jumping away from the planet. And yeet! There we go. And now we can actually see what we're doing. Of where we'll be heading in the next episode. We have some sort of planet ahead of us. From this distance, can't really see much. Uh, we can take over one of the turrets. And zoom in a little bit. I don't know about you, but that's a lot of blue. I kind of have a feeling this is a water world. And as such, we're going to see if the dropship can float. <laughs> it's been a while since I've landed it, and I haven't landed it while well, I've had it pressurized yet. So we're going to see if that pressurization is enough to keep it above the surface. If not, we have a submarine. But hey, that's also cool. But that will be in the next episode. And hopefully, hopefully we find some cool materials. And we can uh, get some refining going on. But that's going to be it for now. Thanks for watching. And good hunting out there, fellow space engineers.